Well, I mean, I watched you growing up and I mean, Look, I'm fine. she's fine. I, I am. Well, how, I mean, what is it like now to, you know, all these years later, do people come up to you on the streets a lot? And they're like, I grew up with you. What's it like? It's that's exactly what it's like. People come up to me continually and say they watch the show. Almost all of them say they love the show. And that's very gratifying. I loved it too. I think I learned some stuff. I learned about the clouds. I, and now I'm learning even more with this new show. I don't know that I am as excited to watch it just because I was one of those kids that was afraid the world was going to end in 2012. But they didn't. The world didn't end in 2012. Uh, credit card companies knew that. They kept printing cards with expiration dates way past 2012. And look, we're all here. We are. And I, you know, I'm curious. I mean, how do you get people to watch the show? Well, I talk to you, Cindy. Cool. It's all about <laughs> you and me, man. Well, man. No, so here's the strange thing or surprising to me. When things are good in the world, when your life is good, we all go to see romantic comedies as we do. But when the world is anxiety producing, then we go watch movies that make us more anxious. It's some strange thing. During a pandemic, we all rent contagion or something. And so there is a lot to make us anxious, uh, end of the world girl, person, woman now. Uh, and so we have made six disaster movies, one hour long. But the twist, the dual structure is in the second half, we show you how everything would be great if we just saw these problems coming and addressed them, got ready for them, then we could make the world better for everyone. Well, and then what inspired you to do this? Was it just like the pandemic, all the madness? Oh, we the reason we're doing the show is because we want to change the world. I'm not kidding. I'm not saying, oh, we made six hours of television, therefore the world will be redirected. But the idea of the show is to influence people entertain them, entertain viewers who are paying good money for the streaming service and uh, uh, inspire them. And I mean, would you recommend showing this to kids or is this purely an adult focused show? Well, you tell me in 2012, you were afraid of the world ending from a comet. All right. If you, if you watched our episode about the incoming comet, and we do something about it, would that make you feel better about things or worse? I think there so, is some comfort in watching it, yeah. All right, so our claim is make you feel better because we show you what we would do to prevent, to find the comet and then give it a nudge so it doesn't hit the earth. You know, there is, as we like to say, there is no evidence that the ancient dinosaurs had a space program. If they did, it wasn't good enough. They got hit anyway. So we don't want that to happen to us, but we have a space program. We have all these instruments that can look for these incoming rocks and asteroids and comet nuclei. So let's go people, let's do something about it. It's gonna be fun. Well, and what was it like working with Seth, Mac Seth MacFarlane? Oh, it was fun. You know, he's very funny and he's very thoughtful. He's very concerned about this current uh, anti-science sentiment in our society where people are eschewing or ignoring or setting science aside uh, when we need science and innovation and new technologies more than ever. He's very genuinely concerned about that. And you know, I'll just uh, as an aside, you know, Seth MacFarlane is quite a musician, by the way, but neither here nor there. Uh, he pointed out early on when we were having discussions about what this show would be like, he pointed out Conservative media are so successful. So many people watch conservative media because they scare people. They scare people. So we need to scare people. And that's what that's the goal of these shows. The first half hour of these one hour shows or 26 minutes, one hour shows. So um, some disclosure, as you may know, I get killed in the first at the end of the first half of every show. Yes, killed. But then with television, I come back and we have this optimistic view of the future and we convey it. Well, that goes into my next question. I think a lot of people would say that this is political. 
science wasn't that way when I was younger. How, okay. what, what do you think of this? Note well, nota bene, as we say in Latin. Everything is political. Science is political. What we don't want, and I'm not splitting hairs here, what we don't want is for it to be partisan. This is to say what you're, as a society, what you're going to do with your so-called intellect and treasure, your brain trust and your money and your resources, how you're going to apply that is political. You know, are we going to pay teacher salaries or build a new baseball stadium to improve the economy of that downtown? Okay, well, we, okay, you probably want to do both in that example. And so we want, politics is always going to influence our decisions about uh, regarding how we apply tax revenues, how we zone uh, places to live and places to build buildings. But we don't want it to be partisan. We don't want it to be where um, one set of people thinks this fact about nature and another people thinks this fact about nature is not a fact. We don't want that. So I know what you're saying, but uh, we did our best to get scientific consultants, science consultants who are experts in the fields of volcano, soil chemistry, volcanoes, soil chemistry, uh, wind turbines, um, uh, tsunamis, geologic motion, and coronal mass ejections, these uh, particles streaming from the sun that are highly charged that could turn off all the electricity on the wrong day. So we got real people who are experts in their fields to uh, help us get the scripts uh, accurate to the in the scientific prediction of the future kind of way. Thank you.